Hello everyone. So today we begins with the membrane potential. Concentration of ions in the intracellular fluid and in the extracellular fluid. Before we begins with the membrane potential, we must have to know about the whatever the concentrations of ion in the intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid. So here it is the sodium ion. in the extracellular fluid 145 milli equilibrium per liter and in the intracellular fluid 14 milli equilibrium per liter so here the concentration gradient for the sodium ion between intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid is 14 raised to 1 for the potassium ion in the ecf concentration 4 milli equilibrium per liter and in the icf concentration 140 milli equilibrium per liter and here the gradient or the concentration gradient between ecf and icf is 1 raised to 35 for the chloride ions in the ecf the concentration is 115 milli equilibrium per liter and in the intracellular fluid the concentration is 5 milli equilibrium per liter and the concentration gradient between ecf and icf is around 29 raised to 1 in the extracellular fluid there are bicarbonates calcium ion and magnesium ions which are high in concentration are present so in the intracellular fluid proteins phosphates and other anions and these all are the high in amount in the intracellular fluid compartment so this is just a concentration of ions in the intracellular fluid compartment and extracellular fluid compartment the major you have to or you must have to remember about the sodium ion and potassium ion now the nuns equation what is nuns equation when membrane is permeable to one ion and concentration gradient becomes equal to electrical force no net movement of the ion occurs so when the membrane is permeable to only one ion remember only single ion either sodium or uh, either uh, potassium ion and here the concentration gradient becomes equal to electrical force so here whatever the concentration gradient is generated between ecf and icf is uh, equal to the electrical force so that there will be no any type of movement of ion occurs across the cell membrane so this is the nuns equation and uh, here this is the formula how we are going to find the nuns potential for individual ion just remember this is nuns equation works only for single ion so here the emf or the electromotive force or the nuns potential is equal to plus or minus 61 log concentration of ions inside the cell and concentration of ions outside of the cell or simply a concentration of ion in the intracellular fluid and concentration of ions in the extracellular fluid and uh, when we put all these values in this formula we will get the nuns potential so here we are going to count the nuns potential for the sodium ion and potassium ion so how we are going to count the nuns potential for sodium ion whenever we put this value of ecf and icf of the sodium ion in the concentration inside and concentration outside so we have to put this icf value over here and ecf value over here so we will get this a plus 61 millivolt of the nuns potential for sodium ion now the nuns potential for potassium ion is minus 94 millivolt how we are going to find this so emf or the nuns potential is equal to plus or minus 61 log concentration of the potassium ion inside the cell divided by concentration of the potassium ion in the extracellular fluid or the outside of the cell so in the this uh, concentration inside the cell we have to put this value of the icf and in the concentration outside the cell we have to put this value of the ecf in this formula and we will get the nuns potential for potassium ion it is around minus 94 millivolt you can just uh, calculate via your mobile calculator and you will get roughly around minus 94 millivolt of the 
नॉन्स पोटेंशियल फॉर द पोटेशियम आयन एंड नॉन्स पोटेंशियल फॉर द सोडियम आयन विच इज अराउंड प्लस सिक्सटी वन मिली वोल्ट नाउ हियर इट इज द गोल्ड मैंस इक्वेशन नाउ वेन एवर वी आर थिंकिंग अबाउट द नॉन्स पोटेंशियल और नॉन्स इक्वेशन इट इज वर्किंग ओनली फॉर अ सिंगल आयन बट वॉट विल हैपन across the cell membrane there are lots of ion running inside and outside of the cell according to the potential difference so here we have to find out the summated potential of all the running ions across the cell membrane how can we are going to find this summated potential so this is the goldman equation and uh, the goldman equation we have to put this concentration of sodium ion inside concentration of sodium ion outside this is the permeability constant for the sodium ion this is the potassium concentration inside the cell potassium concentration outside of the cell and permeability of the potassium ion chloride concentration outside of the cell chloride concentration inside of the cell and permeability of the chloride ion so when all these values we have to put in this formula or the equation then we will get the summated potential across the cell membrane now when the membrane is permeable to many ions diffusion potential depends on permeability of membrane to each ion because there is a permeability of membrane to different ion is different so the summated potential is depends on the permeability of membrane to each ion polarity of the ions the positive charge or the negative charge is also depends and uh, concentration gradient of the ion yes definitely all these three factors are going to affect the membrane potential permeability of the membrane to each ion polarity of ions and concentration gradient of ions and when we are going to find out the all the summated potential of this uh, membrane then it is known as membrane potential and we are going to find this membrane potential with the help of this goldman equation remember thing nuns equation we are going to find only for the one ion and when we are uh, thinking about all the possible ion across the cell membrane then we have to put the all the values of all other ions in the inside and outside concentration in the goldman equation now what is resting membrane potential it is the potential difference between inside and outside of the cell at rest so here the whatever the potential which is generated between inside and outside of the cell at its resting condition so resting condition means no any type of movement of substances or ions occurring it is not excited it indicates state of polarization of cell membrane resting potential in cells are normally more negative inside than outside ranging from minus 10 millivolt to minus 100 millivolt so the range of resting membrane potential is different for different structure for example for the resting membrane potential in nerve it is around minus 70 millivolt in muscles it is around minus 90 millivolt so the range of the resting membrane potential is between minus 10 to minus 100 millivolt but you must have to remember the resting membrane potential in nerve fiber it is minus 70 millivolt and in muscle fiber or the muscles it is around minus 90 millivolt now genesis of resting membrane potential how the resting membrane potential has been generated there are two mechanisms which uh, generate the resting membrane potential due to distribution of ions across the cell membrane first thing and second thing sodium potassium pump these are the two mechanisms by which there is a maintenance or the generation of resting membrane potential or the genesis of resting membrane potential what do you mean by influx and what do you mean by efflux influx it is the net movement of ions into the cell from the extracellular fluid so whenever there is a movement of the ion occur from the extracellular fluid 
inner side of the cell then it is known as influx and efflux is the net movement of ions out of the cell to the extracellular fluid so it is known as efflux whenever the movement of the ion occur inside the cell so it is known as influx and whenever the movement of the ions occurs outside of the cell so it is known as efflux we will see later on what is the contribution of sodium potassium pump but uh, before we are going to concentrate on the nonce potential of the sodium ion and potassium ion as there is a concentration difference of both these ion in the intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid is major difference so nonce potential for the sodium ion is plus 61 millivolt and nonce potential for potassium ion is minus 94 millivolt when we put all these values inside the goldman equation remember goldman equation then we will get the summated potential of minus 86 millivolt all right the summated potential whatever we we will get when we put the whatever the concentration of sodium ion inside and outside whatever the concentration of potassium ion inside and outside as well as the permeability of the sodium ions and the permeability of the potassium ions across the cell membrane then we will get this minus 86 millivolt now try to come to the sodium potassium pump what sodium potassium pump will do it pumps three sodium ion out of the cell and two potassium ion inside the cell so simply three positive charges moves out of the cell and two positive charges moves inside the cell so the net will be there is a loss of one positive charge from the intracellular fluid to the extracellular fluid and due to this this sodium potassium pump contributes additional minus 4 millivolt so here minus 86 millivolt and minus 4 millivolt when we add all these things then we will get the resting membrane potential is around minus 90 millivolt we calculate the resting membrane potential for the muscle fiber and the same thing we found that the resting membrane potential in the nerve fiber is minus 70 millivolt all right now how we are going to measure the membrane potential so this is the simple device and uh, where we have to put the recording electrode just inside of the cell and in different electrode on the surface of the cell and uh, whatever the potential has been recorded on this voltmeter is around minus 90 millivolt all right this is the simple procedure how we are going to record the membrane potential or the resting membrane potential of the cell